good morning and welcome to the concept of the new episode of Dr. Lamba explains Sikhism and today we will talk about a very well known attribute of Sikhism which has now become almost internationally accepted and people marvel at it. It is Langar. Now Sikhs have a unique concept to provide free food and also a free stay in the Gurdwaras to the people irrespective of their caste, color, religion, sex, no discrimination. And the food is given without any question. Anybody can go, what is the food? And come back. This concept of the free Langar is peculiar to Sikhism but then it's not only of Sikhism, basically this is a very old tradition of India and Persia as a matter, but the word Langa, literally the Komji free kitchen, was made an integral part of Sikhism, but originally it is not Sikh. And here now the concept has increased. Earlier the langar used to be at a fixed place or wherever the festivity was held. Now, wherever the problem is, wherever the people are suffering, Sikhs go there and provide langar. So much so that recently in the pandemic there was a langar of oxygen cylinders. Oxygen was in short supply, so they had oxygen langar. And it's a place. Originally it was a place where everyone gathered, had together, and the free food that is served. And the another quality or attribute is that the food is made by the volunteers. Utensils are washed by the volunteers, food is served by the volunteers, there is no paid employee who works there. Originally the word langar was used in Persia. It's a Persian word. And the Persian word was adopted through the Sufis by the Sikhs. So this is inherited by interaction of Sikhism. Of course, even in Sanskrit, there is a word which is called Amalga, and the, some scholars trace the word to this word. In Persian, the specific term langar has been used in identical purpose, or identical sense in which it is used by the Sikhs. And as I said, the institution of langar is traceable in the Persian tradition. As a matter of fact, if you look, even in the old days, in the temples in Hindu culture, langas used to be served and, and they would call it a bhoj or whatever, and it was a free thing. But it was more an act of charity and there was no equality, there are different people would be served at a different place. The noblemen would be seated on cushions and things like that. But here in Sikhism, there's a langar, there's another concept as well, that's called pankat, line. You have to sit in one line, irrespective of your status, your sex, your color, your creed, or your religion. The story says that Akbar wanted to meet Guru Amar Das and he went to the Guru, meet the Guru. But the Guru asked him first to eat with the common people in the langar and then he will make him. So there is no difference between the king and the common public. So that concept was not in Hinduism, but it was there in Persianism. And in the 12th century, Persian langars were a common feature, 12th and the 13th century, wherever the Sufis were, langar used to be run. And even today some dargahs are shrines like Khwaja, boys in Chishkin, like me, Langar Zara. And then 
seeing the need and the utility the gurus incorporated it. The concept of charity are providing cooked meals or even uncooked materials to the ascetics and the wandering yogis have been well known in the Eastern culture for more than 2000 years. But that was not an organized one. However, in spite of the institutional support from several kings and emperors like Delhi Sultanate, it could not be institutionalized in a sustainable community kitchen. The Sufis had sustainable because of the donations by the Nawabs and others. And the Sikhs made it sustainable by absolute voluntary contribution by the people. Secondly, ex before the Sufis, exclusion of the people based on religion, even on caste, made these langas sometimes unreachable for the common people. So the community kitchen or the langa started by Sikh Gurus was universal and accepted, as I said, without any discrimination. And that has not till today. As a matter of fact, if you can see, the disaster strikes, the tsunami, the earthquakes, even the war in Ukraine now, Sikhs have gone there and organized langas. And so much so that this is in fact in many places, replacing or adding on, complementing the work done by the Red Cross Society. So this, the type of food serve, of course, is cooked, as I said, by the volunteers, and it's all vegetarian. Now, another thing, the langars in the Sufi had non-vegetarian food, and even have, but the food served in the Sikh langas, Sikh kitchens, as in Hindu kitchens, is absolutely vegetarian and not non-vegetarian. Now, yogis and Muslim Sufis had this, and it's interestingly, even in Bengal there's a word <coughs> which is langor, L-O-N-G-O-R. So even Bengalis had it, as I said, it was a universal practice in the whole of East, coming from Persia to Iran and India, in between Middle East. But the historical, institutionalized, was first time done by Baba Freed, a Muslim of the Chishti Sufi order. And so, he was the person who started it, then the practice grew and is documented in Joire Faridi. This was completed in 1623 and it was later on both an institution and then adopted by the Sikhs with a refinement. Food in the Sufis system is served with a massive pot called a deg and is cooked over a period of time, but particularly community, not here in Sikhism. The root of such voluntary and charitable feeding is very old in Sikh traditions. In Gupta time, Hindu temples used to have dharamsalas, so the people would feed to the travelers and the poor on whatever donation they may leave. Then, you know, these dharamsalas became satrams, anaya satram chol trees in part. And that way Langar is an Aryan institution with some aspects of the Persian and the Sufi saints and then this exclusive thing emerged. Now, what happened? Hindus earlier could not attend the Muslim Langars, Muslims could not attend the Hindu Langars, so the device was there. But the Sufi said, no, they can come and now Hindus go and there. The f in the Chinese Buddhist pilgrim in the 7th century before Christ, Qing wrote about the monasteries where such voluntary teachers were run. And the institution of langa, 
a mile from Freed to Freedudin Gani Shankar, a Sufi Muslim saint living in Punjab. As I said, so then it was incorporated in Jawahari Kashmiri. And then Guru Nanak did not start it. It is always mistakenly said that Guru Nanak started Langar. No, he did feed some ascetics. Yes, but it was a common practice which had been done and is being done continuously since times immemorial. The second Guru, Guru Angad, systemized the institution of Langar in some six temples, but the real work was done by Guru Amar Das, who made it an integral part, well established Langar as a prominent institution. And Amar Das encouraged the practice of Langar and made all those who wanted to meet him, as I told you about King Akbar, to eat in Langar first and then come and meet him. Now, Guru Amar Das was more of a spreader of knowledge and information. Guru Nanak was a reforming, but Guru Amar Das was spreading the concepts. Now, what are the key features of the Langar and why it's important? First is, Langar is run by the volunteers who can be male or female. And it is seen as a privilege to help and receive help in running the langar. People help by cooking, cleaning, serving the langar, and they don't feel bad. As you might have seen, some people just clean the shoes of the people who come to the langar. So there's no problem. Then there's, as a matter of fact, a waiting list of people who want to provide the langar each week. This is because they want to serve God. And serving people is serving God. Then, most important, it reminds the people, the volunteers and the acolytes of Sikhism that all human beings belong to the same human family and should be treated equally, immaterial what their religion is, what their sex is, what their color is. So food is offered that way. And as I said, it's a vegetarian food, but there's a condition. Even the vegetarian cannot be halal food. Of course, meat is not published. Now, langar is, has a religious connotation as well, let me tell you. In Guru Granth Sahib, on page 967, the langar is referred to, and the kitchen of Gurus, it is Shabbat. And so, the historical and the religious connotation is there. People normally think, and they are using Langa as a way of assuring. Now one thing is creeping in, which of course is against the concept of Sikhism. Now wherever the Langas are, the, it's popularized, Sikhs are provided. If it's a news, it's something different. But then, you know, I saw a couple of polls. We are proud to be sick because we are providing food to the people in Ukraine. Now this is pride. And this is against Sikhism. Langar which we provide, you just provide as a service, not as a matter of pride. If you do it as a matter of pride, then it loses its sanctity and does not remain what it was meant to be by Guru Amar Das, who made it absolutely quiet, unnamed service to the poor, to the needy, to the hungry. That was one thing. The second was the equality of all and the humanity that pervades it. Unfortunately, when you start propagating and claiming that you are exclusive and you are doing something, then it loses its sense of sacredness and its sanctity. And that's what is happening to Langar. So excellent concept, excellent idea, 
full of milk of human kindness, compassion, generosity, when it's touted as something great, then it loses its significance. Langar has a concept. Now, there's a difference in the langars and the free kitchens. I know the soup kitchens and the free kitchens are run, but they are run mostly by the volunteers. But then they are not round the clock. The quality of the langar is that it is served round the clock. Though in small Gurdwara is there always a time limit, but in the major Gurdwaras, you can you reach any time, you'll get food. You would not be denied food. And that is it that come to me all the poor and the meek. That is what the religion was. The poor, the meek, the weak, the downtrodden, and the king, or rather, in fact, whosoever is needy is welcome. And Langer is an equalizer. It's the first concept at socialism. Not in the negative sense, but in the positive sense, that all are equal. And the false discriminations, especially when you are having food, must not be allowed to creep in. And the eyes of the God, they are equal. Women cannot go to some temples when they are menstruating. Muslims would not allow Hindus to enter the masjids. Hindus would not allow Muslims to enter the major temples. So much so that these barriers, which are not supposed to bear any religion, are erected by the acolytes. Sikhism that way has maintained its shall I say, pristine sanctity of treating everybody as equal and Langar is a living example of that. Thank you.